you, you're doing a, a, a talk on weather myths, but you've got a, 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 a academic weather background. You're, you're, you do weather photography as well, and you, you do a great job with that. Weather myths, though, what, why get into that? Tell us where this kind of originated from. Well, this is actually pretty much where my career started. Uh, it's an interest in weather. I remember the very first tornado event I could recall growing up was April 26, 1991, the infamous uh, tornado overpass video. And actually, that's going to be one of the big myths I'll be covering tomorrow is the, why people use overpasses how that originated from that video. That's where it really started. It was back in 1991, it just escalated from there, went into meteorology, went to Ohio State, got my degree, and here I am talking mm. to you fine gentlemen today. There's a lot of Buckeyes in the room today. <laughs> the, come to find out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know what, it wasn't, I came here before you guys joined the Big Ten, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. I wanted to ask you, I knew that you were uh, down uh, photographing around that, that storm in Oklahoma that was so dangerous. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, you weren't anywhere where you were going to get hurt, and and that's that's part of your training too, is to not get hurt and not put yourself in harm's way. But talk about the severity of that storm, what you saw that day. Well, that's a day that I will personally never forget. Uh, May thirty first, two thousand thirteen, El Reno, Oklahoma. Uh, just something about that day, through the years of my experience with you know weather and and, and chasing, you know, fifteen years now of storm chasing. You just had that feeling, that feeling in the pit of my stomach, that this day was just not going to be good. Uh, I even wrote about saying, you know, this day may be something that we remember for a long time. Mm. And it was a situation, you know, the biggest thing about storm chasing, and this is not really well covered, but it's, you know, knowing your location in relation to the storm, the road networks and everything, making sure you're not getting too close, making sure you're not, you know, getting too dangerous. And, be honest with you, it was an absolute tragedy what happened down there with the three, you know, professional chasers that were killed during that event. Basically, at that point, I've said it time in, time out, no storm was worth dying for. And at that point, seeing that tornado that day was probably the furthest thing from my mind. What's interesting about that particular storm is, and we, we were kidding about this a little bit earlier in the show, that was the day that we were watching all the chasers online. Yeah. Is the day that those guys lost their lives. And there were a lot of guys out that day. Uh, 28 on the site that we were looking at, but maybe you can talk about the Chaser Network now as opposed to when you got started. Back, you know, when I first started, actually, you know, mid-2001, uh, and actually it was kind of funny, we were watching videos just last night on old VHS tapes, if some of the people remember what those are out there. But it's absolutely amazing that you come up to a storm and there'd be no one around, absolutely nobody. And now every event that comes up, it's just, it's just the way things have progressed now. It just well, everybody's got, everybody's got a video camera on their phone. Social media, you know, mm -hmm. iPhones and everything. It's just, it's it's now become, it's almost now, it's like extreme sports, mm. almost to some degree. Yeah. It's one of those things where I always advocate, you know, safety first, no matter what. Again, I'm, I'm not a kamikaze guy. Um, if that's what... The, you know those individuals want to do then you know what more power to them but you know that's not going to be my approach and again the biggest thing on my mind that day was to make sure to protect my wife and our friend who yeah. was with me that day that was the biggest thing on my mind not putting them in danger jeremy bowers the owner of jrv storm photography you're going to talk uh, at weatherfest about the biggest myths uh weather wise so give us a little preview. What are what are what are the biggest myth that people buy into when it comes to the weather? You know, I think now, amazingly, the biggest myth that's out there, I me, mean, just kind of covered that, and that is the no warning excuse, saying that we weren't adequately warned, we weren't warned. Some of the things we're going to cover very very early on in the presentation, some really clear cut examples recently in the news, some winter weather examples, the what happened down in Atlanta, that whole ordeal. Uh, the Indiana, well, Al Roker was really upset uh, about that. That, that. that in itself was a prime example of something that could have been very minuscule and turned into something very big. And again, I'm going to cover that in, in great detail. The Indiana State Fairgrounds, August of 2011, oh, yeah. the uh, Sugarland concert. Mm -hmm. We're going to cover that in great detail and uh, show you exactly what happened, the timeline events, and what could have been done. Again, we're going to talk about tornado, the overpasses, car versus tornado. Uh, why you should not be in a vehicle. That'd be the absolute last place you want to be during a tornado. A couple little things. It's going to seem like the best way to explain it, it's going to be like a movie. There's going to be a lot of plots, literally a lot of twists, and a surprise ending. Ooh. Wow. Okay. We did a nice teaser there. there. I'm kind of fired up for that thing now. <laughs>
Uh, but uh, you do you take amazing pictures. I've seen I've seen a lot of them before. Uh, we've got uh, much like we have a lot of amateur storm chasers. We have a lot of amateur uh, weather photographers. That's probably a better thing than people trying their hand out if they're not experts at. What kind of advice do you have for people who who like to do that when it, when they like to try and get some really cool nature uh, weather photos? Yeah, my first piece of advice would be is don't be afraid to ask questions. I think one of the biggest things in today's society is people feel like if they ask questions, they feel like they're either bothering someone or they just feel, you know, it's like I feel dumb for asking a question. You know, in my experience, I've always told, if you have a question, ask. The biggest thing about getting started is if you're going to go with a camera, go with something you're comfortable with. And that's the reason why I know several people that have bought a camera, it's way too much for them. It's okay. If you feel okay with just an iPhone, you know what? You can do a lot of things with an iPhone now. Start off with a Kodak Brownie or perhaps uh, <laughs> yeah. some kind of Polaroid. Or Kodak or one of sure. those old things back <laughs> yeah. there. From, yeah. Your Polaroid? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think you know, my first experience of uh, photographing storms was with my grandpa's Polaroid camera. I mean, they didn't come uh, out, but hey, that was my first Did you first ever thing. capture any lightning that way? That's that's a special <laughs> talent. I tried. Right I, was, I was young, naive, and dumb, guys. What can I say? <laughs> Very good. Jeremy Bauer will be speaking uh, at Weatherfest. I want to get back to, to Dr. Dewey real quickly here, too. Hey, I, I, I know.